On this episode, we are cooking. Looks a little bit like a hamburger recipe. That is not a hamburger I am familiar with. I know, this is getting crazy. I know, dude. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay, don't go away. Perhaps we should watch less anime. Akira Tetsuo! Hi, everybody. This is Christian from Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to episode 88 of the advanced schmuck tutorial. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome. So, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the bomb. We're gonna make a huge, huge bomb explosion. But before we do, there is small, two small things that I want to fix that people have been commenting on and I've been noticing while I was editing the previous videos. First thing, in make opt. Make opt. Where's make opt? There it is. Um, make opt needs to be local. What? Ah, there we go. The R that needs to be local, I think, uh, because that's 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 not good. <laughs> yeah, so the R needs to be local here. Small mistake. And then the other one is in wait. There it goes in a wait function. So smelly fish stick said, wouldn't a loop be cheaper? Um, a for loop be cheaper than a repeat until decrementing in the wait function? So yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think so, yeah. A for loop might, might be cheaper. Let's see if this it will be cheaper. It is a little bit weird that I use this, um, but um, I don't know even why I did this. Uh, but let's write this down. 4660, right? And we're gonna go 4i equals uh, 1, 2 underscore wait, wait, do, and, and then we're gonna do a flip here right that seems that seems a lot more useful uh so that's eight tokens and this is oh this is 10 tokens no way crazy all right so let's uh, let's rewrite this to this and that's a lot better yeah thank you so much Sm smelly fish sticks found two tokens Woo. i'm not i'm not i'm not making fun of you this is this is a big deal actually i like it a lot why do we have such a huge score? What did we do last time? Oh my gosh, this feels immediately so good. So let me let me see if a wait is happening. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Cool. But now let us talk about the thing that we actually want. So lock player to the screen. <laughs> I'm just gonna defer this to later. I don't want to be wasting any more time. We want to jump into bombs. There's a lot of stuff to discuss with the bombs. So let me just like re, uh, retell the story of how I arrived at the bomb that we're going to do today because I tried a lot of different bombs and actually that was a major part of the prototyping phase that I just did, uh, trying to find out the right bomb effect, not just in a visual sense, but also in like a gameplay sense, like what does it need to do gameplay wise and what is good. I tried rockets, I tried... Uh, different types of explosions, right? And and I finally, I, this is like the third or fourth iteration of that effect that I I ended up with. Um, so first attempt was just to reuse the explosions that we already have. We have beautiful. We spend a lot of time creating like those explosion blobs of like these fiery explosions, and they're fantastic. I tried to fill the entire screen with those. It did not work because it just um, it's just too much processing power. You cannot fill the entire screen with particles like that. Is just um, and also like it. It didn't feel forceful. Like it didn't feel like like a force coming coming out. Those explosions are just more like combustion and less than like a like a forceful explosion, right? So um, I had like the missile thing, but that was just like very complicated and convoluted, and it was difficult to make it work. So I decided to stick to a like a regular bomb. And but I still wanted because the missiles were like inspired by an enemy. It was inspired by macros and so i kind of like still was circling around visuals from anime and i think this is kind of like a very important um uh, lesson or something i want to convey to you and, and that is kind of like assemble a repository of visual effects that inspire you that you find interesting that, that really make your heart flutter when you see them like things that you really like visually and then as a next step i want you to disassemble them i want to try to uh, f uh, make you understand how they work uh, you want to be like oh this is cool how does that work you know and this is something that you very well can do with visual effects reproducing visual effects that you find cool 
is a good pathway to develop your own skills at being a visual person, a person who creates visual effects. And I think video games fall into that category. You are doing visual stuff, whether you want it or not. So what I want to do today is I want to disassemble a visual effect that I find like really impressive. And I want to recreate this in Pico 8. I want to recreate it in our game. And the effect I'm talking about is none other than the Akira opening bomb explosion. So if <laughs> and the younglings, the younglings sit down at a bonfire. Let me tell you a story about an old enemy that was incredibly impressive at the time and still think, uh, I think it still is. Uh, especially the manga is also impressive, but also anime is also amazing. So this is an anime called Akira and it starts with a gigantic explosion that, that completely demolishes a city. Let me play you this and hopefully we're not gonna get a content ID for this. So you see there's like an explosion happening. This is an impressive explosion and this is a visual effect that you see like quoted all the time in anime and in also different types of animations. A lot of things from Akira are being quoted. Like they, they set the, they wrote the book on, on visual, visual effects. And I think this is a fantastic visual effect. One of the things that I really like about this effect is that it's kind of simple. It is also kind of slow like it's an explosion right but it's kind of doesn't like it takes a while it doesn't just like explode it's just like it, it goes for on for a while it is big it looks gigantic right and um it like it quotes a lot of visual things that you saw previously maybe you saw some like you know footage of of uh, atomic tests and i think this quotes very smartly it quotes some of them as well there's just a lot going on in here and i want to disassemble this a little bit let me just step really quickly through some of the things that we see so first it starts with a shadow on the ground it started with shadow on the ground it is a little bit weird because it's inverted the shadow is actually glowing and then there's like a dome on top of it and that is dark like it's, it's a, there's something supernatural happening here and i think this is this is uh, man akira right and so what you see is that there's a shadow on the ground but there's also like a dome on top of the sh of that shadow i'm gonna call it shadow even though it's glowing there's a dome appearing on top of it that that starts at the top and then like it envelops kind of like an invisible semicircle or like an invisible dome like there is like something uh appearing on in the middle on top and then just like going outside and then meeting finally the shadow, right? There was some kind of invisible force that becomes visible. And that is actually something that sometimes you see in uh, nuclear, ex nuclear explosions when you know there is like a shock wave and you don't see the shock wave, but then when the shock wave meets like upper layers of the atmosphere, suddenly there's condensation happening and you see like those clouds. It's kind of like quoting a lot of visual stuff that you see in uh, atomic explosions. Right, so um, so the dome comes down and it meets the shadow, right? And when that happens, suddenly there's like an inversion. There's a flash, and the flash is very cool, very important. And now we see everything inverts. Now the dome is no longer black. Now it's glowing, and it illuminates the entire environment. But also, you see all the clouds at the bottom, all the clouds at uh, exactly where the dome meets the shadow, you see now a cloud of, of smoke. And again, this is, I think, a little bit quoting, again, um, atomic explosions. There is an, an atomic explosion, you see like a, there's like a fireball. And the, when the initial fireball, the plasma, when that meets the ground, it, it incinerates the gr ground, it vaporizes the ground, and that creates like lots of smoke. Right, so let's continue stepping through this. Oh, wait. <laughs> there's actually, the, the explosion got a little bit smaller there. That's an interesting detail, I haven't noticed this previously. And now you see this glow, glowing, um, growing, and it grows faster now. There's an accelerated growth. The camera actually zooms out to encompass this. You see some beautiful buildings in the foreground to kind of give you a sense of scale. That is, that is what makes it look so huge, right? You see like how the, the, the towers are being dwarfed by this gigantic dome that just keeps expanding. You see some clouds in the foreground that even like add to the sense of scale. But also the clouds that we saw previously that were really puffy, now just like, um, gets uh, reduced to like these just like lines going up. And I think this is very smart. Of, on the one hand, it's kind of like this, it's, it looks like the, because you, you see like the, when the, it's actually buildings, the buildings turn into smoke and then they disappear into light. So you see like the destructive power of the explosion. But also I think the lines, 
they kind of um, still give you a sense of the curvature of the dome because right now the dome is just like filling the entire screen. You don't really see what the dome is, but the lines still give you an indication of you know how big that dome has to be because the the lines follow the curvature, right? And then then it just fades into white. Very smart, very efficient. It's just like a circle, right? <laughs> We had that before. It's just a circle, right? Um, but it gives you a good sense of scale, as I said. It also conveys very well the spatial dimensions of it. Like it's an it is an object in Germany. You would say uh, it is plastic, right? Like you could it feels like you could maybe touch it. It is not an abstract object. It's something very concrete, right? And also something I really appreciate about this is that there is like this very distinct sequence of events like this is not just uh, motion it's it goes through a it evolves over time right it starts differently than it ends up with and and it goes through all these different parts it accelerates there's a change of speed happening and so forth and there is a like a nice end in the white flash okay so we're not going to completely replicate all of what we've seen here, but we're going to use this as a starting point. And I think a good starting point to think about is how are we, because there's a dome, so how are we going to draw a dome in our game? Let's start with paint. Off the bat, uh, something I want to right away. Where do we, oh my gosh. Did, did, did paint change once more? Oh my gosh. So in Akira, we see the dome kind of looks like this, right? It kind of looks like this. And then there's like these lines going up. This is kind of like, broadly speaking, what we see with the dome. And then there's like a shadow underneath. I'm making the shadow a little bigger so we can see it, but actually it's like underneath the dome, right? And actually at some point the dome meets the shadow, you don't really see the shadow anymore, but I'm gonna draw it anyway. Okay, so let's break it down. Like, okay, so this is like this oblique perspective that we see in, in Akira, but that's not what our game is. Our game is not quite as oblique. Our game is from the top, more of a top view, but it's at a slightly at an angle. It's still a little bit oblique, but not as extreme. But I think we can still use Akira as a as a inspiration. So we can now disassemble this into individual shapes that we can draw in Pico 8. So this upper part here, this upper part of the dome, like you can see, you can draw like a separating line here through the dome, right? So this upper part is a semicircle. This lower part, that's number one. This lower part, that's number one. This lower part is also a circle, but it's squished. So it's actually a, a semi-ellipse or oval. So the lower part is actually an oval. And the, it depends on how much squished the oval on the bottom is. That changes how much of an oblique view we have. If the oval, if the second part here, if that becomes a circle, then we're looking at the dome from the top view. And if that just becomes a line, if that's not, not even a circle anymore, then we're basically looking at the dome from the side. Then we would something see something like this, right? That would be just like if this was just like those extreme versions. And usually, depending on what kind of perspective we see, the oval will be um, the oval will be some kind of oval, right? It will be have some kind of amount of squishiness. And we have to figure out for our game what amount of squishiness works well. Now, there is another aspect here, and that is gonna be a tricky aspect. That is the actual hard aspect. We have to draw some, um, these are, hmm, these are kind of also ovals, not filled ovals, but also ovals. These lines, uh, these, these smoke lines, right? These are kind of ovals, but they're just like tiny segments of ovals. And those ovals kind of go around the dome. And they would actually, if you continue those lines, you would, there would be like a, a point where they would meet, right? Those ovals would, uh, those, yeah, those, those are ovals. But they're weird ovals. They're, I think, ovals we cannot actually draw in Pico 8, and we're gonna have to fake this a little bit. We could fake this by just making just like horizontal lines, but that wouldn't convey maybe the spatiality of it. We have to see what works. This is hard. This makes me like, hmm. This makes me go like this, or like, actually like this with a tongue, right? This is this is this is the difficult part. The part number three, and then we have part number four that is going to be the shadow. And the shadow is once again very easy. That is once again just an oval. That is basically it. That is all we need to do in order to draw a full dome. Now there is a bit of a caveat to it, and that is we saw in animation the dome was actually appearing at the at the, at the top, right? It was. Was starting small and then getting bigger, right? 
it was going to like lowering down from the from the top and that is going to be a difficult animation we're going to have to deal with that when we deal with that but first i just want to draw that full dome right i just want to draw it to the screen and see if we, if we can make something that looks convincing so let us go through those four steps this is our recipe for drawing a dome it looks a little bit like a hamburger recipe <laughs> Uh, we need to draw this recipe to the screen. Let's start. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually create a new tab for this. How about that? And that is gonna be the bomb, bomb tab because there's gonna be a lot happening here. Function bomb. I'm just gonna call it bomb, right? Uh, and then let's just, just draw a debug one. I just wanna, I wanna be like, I wanna see what the bomb does. Debug one. Oh Jesus. I, I'm telling you, how, did I have German keyboard on? I do not have German keyboard on. Okay equals um yes okay so do we have bomb already no okay so now when we're uh, doing the update function when i press the button i want the bomb to happen <laughs> right now we explode when that happens okay uh let us let us do it like this let's just do the bump right when you press the button we just do the bump later on we're going to figure out exactly how and when the bump triggers but for now it's, it's fine to just do this okay i maybe should do debug two to yes yes okay we we successfully triggering the bomb that's fantastic okay so now we need to think about how to split this burger that we talked about in let's let's let me write this burger down just let's, so so we we know what to do we want to have top circ we want to have bottom um oval we want to have uh, lines nice lines and we want to have shadow oval oh Technically, we want to let me let me print in which uh, order we want to draw things. So we want to draw top circle and bottom circle lines, and we probably want to do the bottom oval first, and then the top circle. And for reasons I will explain in a second. So this is the order of things in which we want to draw uh, things to the screen. Now um, I will spoil right away that the reason why I really like that that Akira explosion uh, was this first part. The first part where you just see the shadow, that is a very good opportunity to convey certain gameplay ideas. And the gameplay idea that I really need to, uh, the explosion to communicate is, is that uh, in my prototypes, I have this gameplay concept that the explosions is turning um, certain objects, in our case, uh, the bullets, the bullets are being turned into power ups. And that is something that is difficult to convey, that was difficult to convey with the different explosions I had previously. And I chose this type of explosion specifically because of that shadow at the beginning, right? That's a good opportunity to show that the bullets are being changed into power-ups. So we're gonna pause the game, we're gonna make this, this shadow grow, that shadow will change bullets into power-ups, and then the dome cam comes in and all the rest of the explosion, right? So I want the shadow, the size of the shadow and the size of the dome to be something that you can control independently. I want to maybe have two values controlling them. So let me let me call them bomb RS and then bomb RD maybe something like this. So bomb radius shadow and bomb radius dome. And uh, bomb radius dome we don't need at the, this point or we will need, but we're gonna set it to um, just do the radius of the shadow for now. And bomb radius shadow, I don't know exactly what we're gonna set it to. Let's set it to 32 for now. So these are two values that we definitely need in order to draw our bomb. We're gonna start with the shadow first. There's another thing that we absolutely need. That is gonna be bomb X. We're gonna set it to 64. And bomb Y, we're gonna set it also to 64. Now this bomb RS and bomb RD, uh, we're gonna initialize those already. And I already have an idea of how to initialize them. Let's put them here. So I want to initialize them with a minus one. And the reason for that is, the reason for that is if it's minus one, then I'm not drawing the bomb. Because, you know, we're gonna do an explosion and an explosion might linger a little bit on the screen while the gameplay already continues, right? Uh, and 
So I want to have some kind of indicator when whether you actually finish or finish drawing the bump. When you finish drawing the bump, you no longer draw the bump, right? Uh, we could do like a, a Boolean value for that, like bump exists on the screen, you know. Um, but I think it's wiser to just like reuse the same variable for that. So if the variable is negative, then that means you're not drawing that part of the bump. And that allows you to also trigger the shadow and the dome independently from each other. Right, so let us start with, a, with drawing the bump shadow. And I want to do this here when you're drawing all of the other shadows. Uh, the reason why I want to draw the shadow independently from the dome is that the power-ups are being drawn on top of the shadow, but maybe they will be, get covered by the, by the dome, right? So I want to be, I, it makes sense to split them. There's no good place to put the shadow. I don't want, for example, the shadow to be on top of the player, for example, or on top of other enemies. That may, would feel weird, right? So that's why I want to draw the shadow here when all the other shadows are being drawn. So we're gonna do something like bomb shadow. And we're gonna go if bombers, <laughs> if that's greater than zero, then. So we only draw the bump shadow when it's if it's, it's actually there. Now we're gonna see because I want to see there are some tools that I like. So I have oval too, but also need to also add oval fill. That is twenty three tokens. Ugh. This is something I've been considering, like whether it makes sense to make an overfill too, because the only thing that really changes here is this part, right? Just this part changes, and then we're just replicating the entire function. So if whether we want to have this or whether we want to have, maybe there's some other way of doing this. Maybe we can supply this a function, and then it will call this with that function. Let's 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 try this. Funk. And then I'm gonna go uh, local local funk. Is that possible? Equals funk or oval like this, and then like this. Is that possible? So it's like a like an like a optional value that we add, right? Is, is that, does that break everything? It seems to be going well. What did we use it before? I don't even know what we used the oval fill for. I think we used it for the for the power ups. Oh yeah, the power ups seem to work. Okay, good. Uh, so now we can use this oval two function for the oval fill, right? So um, what I want to do now is I want to draw the shadow. So we're gonna go oval two. Bomb X is gonna be center. Bomb Y is gonna be the center. Now the width is gonna be bomb. RS, that's the width of the bump, the radius of the bump, right? Is it radius? Yeah, it's radius actually, because the way with the oval fill function that we created works is that it actually works with radius. That's interesting. Okay, so bump RS is the, the width and bump RS multiplied with some value. We don't know what value is going to be the height and it's going to be a little bit squished because otherwise it looks, looks weird. I'm going to set it to one for now and we're going to see how that looks. And then we're gonna set a fill, that's gonna be uh, number one. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna not say, any, well, let's, let's see how this works. It should be just like a circle, right? Yes, yeah, so it's the circle. Okay, but now we're gonna go uh, oval fill on this one. Now it's gonna be filled. Oh, this works totally, it works, good. We have now have this, and you, you see, it's, it looks a little bit odd. It looks a little bit too elongated, it doesn't quite look um, as if it was an oblique view. And maybe it's just like a shadow doesn't tell you that much, but you can see it, look at the shadows of our player. That's a little bit of a squished, that is a little of an oval, oval, right? So this, compared to this, it just feels like it's it's different perspective. The, the circle, the big circle looks as if it's a different perspective from the little circle, from the little shadows underneath the edges, right? <clears throat> so let's try something extreme, 0.5. And now it's a little bit too squished, I feel. Like it doesn't quite, like it maybe matches the aspect ratio of, of our little shadows, but those are maybe a little bit exaggerated. It doesn't match the perspective of the tree lines, for example. The trees seem to be a lot more upright than that, that oblique view that we have. 
So now you kind of have to find the right perspective to, <laughs> to make this work. Uh, I did actually some experiments in this and my experiments came up with 0 0.85. That felt correct. Now it is not quite matching the little shadows. I have to say it doesn't quite match little shadows. The little shadows are a little bit uh, over exaggerated. But I think it does match the perspective of the tree lines and the cliffside that we saw. I think this kind of like, this feels okay to me. It also feels a bit closer to the perspective that we see from the, from the motherships. Right, so uh, what I want to maybe do is I want to put that into as a, as a global variable, right? So we're gonna call it purse. I'm gonna set it to 0 .0 0 0.85. This allows us to change this in afterwards, right? So we're gonna just multiply it by purse. Okay, but there is something else that I want to add, and that is I want to add a, a little bit more detail to that shadow. That is a little bit of a small shadow. Uh, um, I want to maybe add an outline. And this is just going to be a normal oval. And we're going to just add plus three here and plus two here. Just to add a bit of a shock wave, so to speak, to the, to the, um, oops, that's not here, that's wrong. Uh, we want to add it here and we want to add plus two here. And that's something I've been experimenting with. It, it seems good. You see something like this. So we have a bit of an, it's not just a shadow, but it looks a little bit as as if uh, it's a like concentric wave of maybe a stone fell into a palm and there's waves going out of it. Because this is going to be eventually like an explosion, right? And that shadow is supposed to ground the explosion. It's supposed to be the point at which the uh, the dome hits the 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 ground, right? So we want to maybe have this feeling that you know there is maybe some kind of shock wave happening at that boundary between the dome and the ground. And uh, animation we saw like smoke happening. We probably can't afford to have the, that kind of level of detail. So I want to maybe convey this with this kind of um, shock wave kind of additional outline, just as a little a little detail. All right. So this is the bump shadow. Let us now move to on to the dome. And I, I checked my prototypes. The way I did this is after the particles, but before the pickups, oddly enough. So the pickups will not be covered by the dome after all. Maybe that is a mistake. And maybe we could do this all in one go because, well, no, the enemies get, so the enemies will get covered by the, by the, by the dome and I want that. Uh, and I want the shots to be covered by the dome. Yes, I also want that, even though maybe somebody like Dictane would <laughs> protest here. I want the, the particles to be covered by the by the bomb. So let's call it here. Let's call it bomb dome, bomb radius D. If that's greater than zero, then we're gonna also draw some ovals. But now we have to look at our um, our, our recipe. So we did are drawing the shadow. We want to draw the bottom oval next, and that's going to be kind of easy. It's going to be kind of easy. It's going to be kind of what we already did. Uh, and I'm going to hard code this as being seven, right? So that's going to be this color seven. Let's draw this. Right, this is our the, the bottom of our dome. This is kind of nice. There's some things I don't quite like about this. And one of the reasons, uh, one of the things I don't quite like about this is that the dome is the the bottom of the dome is now perfectly matches the shadow. I want the shadow to be a little bit visible at the edge, right? It's kind of like these like kind of little details, right? I want the it, it to be a little bit visible at the edge. So I'm gonna add two to the y of the shadow. So the shadow is a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. Ooh, see, see now we're getting a lot more of that of that. Uh, it, it feels the, the the dome feels like it's it it actually hits the ground. It feels like the, it actually drops a shadow a little bit. Um, I also I did a little bit of a tweak there in my experiments. I did also a plus one here on the width. Does that help? Does that look cool? Oh yeah 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 yeah. So now the shadow is also a little bit wider than the dome, right? So it's you can see the shadow peeking from underneath the dome, and I think that helps a lot. That helps a lot making this kind of like look spatial. Uh, okay, good. So this keys kind of like little tweaks that, that we add here. Right, so off the bat, we already have this and this looks already pretty dimensional, I would say. This already could, like, we could sell this as a dome. And that is because of the perspective that we're having. We're kind of having a more of a top-down perspective, right? 
So, like, that's already pretty close to what the dome, what the final dome looked like. Nevertheless, I want to actually add a lower, like the, the actual top part of the dome, the circle that we talked about, right? This is, we already have this now, we have the bottom oval. Um, we now want to add the top circle. So that's, that's the next part that we want to add. Uh, this is a bit tricky because we have to ha draw a semicircle and obviously we don't have a semicircle in Pico 8, but we can fake one. So we do this by doing the clip function. Remember the clip function, that good old clip function? Uh, so <clears throat> it creates like a rectangle and all these draw functions happen within the rectangle. So we're gonna click at zero, zero at the, at the top left of the screen. Uh, something to keep in mind, the clip function does not observe any, any map movements or any camera movements. So it's always like relative to the entire screen. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. In our case, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna deal with just like, we're gonna do like a huge clipping rectangle um, uh, that goes, you know, on the top edge the, that covers the entire screen. And just like the bottom edge of that clipping rectangle will be just exactly in the center of the bomb. And that doesn't matter where it's sideways, you know, because we are scrolling, we have, we have you remember, scroll X, scroll X. Um, that's not doesn't come into 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 question here. So uh, we're gonna go bomb Y bomb uh, and then it's gonna be wait. So it's gonna be 128 comma bomb Y. That's gonna be our clipping rectangle, and then we can do circ fill bomb X bomb Y bomb R D. So the radius of our of our um, our bomb and then seven. All right, let's see if that works. Yeah, it works. Oh, what? <laughs> we are not resetting the clipping rectangle, but now we can also see the clipping rectangle at work. <coughs> yeah, so now we can, our game is confined to the top edge of the screen. We can re release the clipping rectangle afterward and then you have the beautiful explosion. Yes. So you see, now you said you have that kind of, you see how, because the shadow is b disappearing behind the limb of the dome, it feels like it's sticking out like a pimple or like this, these air air bubbles from the from the bubble wrap, you know? Uh, it's, it's, it looks very nice and, and plastic as we Germans say. So yeah, that's what I wanted to achieve, broadly speaking, but there is one last effect that I want to add that's gonna be a tricky effect. That is the thing I call the streaks, the streaks. And the streaks are tough because you see if you, oh man, if you go in here, so the streaks are kind of like going through here and through going through like a middle point. And they're kind of also like an oval, but they're a weird oval. They're, they're not like an oval that goes like this and like this and like this and like this. And then just like like this nice uh, nice oval, they, they have like they, this kind of like one of those ovals that is kind of like skewed, right? So the the apexes of the oval are weird. Oh gosh, it's difficult to draw this with my mouse. But the apexes of the oval are kind of like in an angle, so it's kind of like a skewed oval, and that's tough to draw. <laughs> that's a tough thing to draw uh, in in Pico Eight. Uh, we would have to draw this manually, and it's just like this little line, right? It just doesn't really matter that much. So I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, this is tough because it will cost us a lot of tokens to add this little detail, and I don't know if it's worth it. But I will mark. I will do it, and I will mark this as a as a detail that is. As soon as we need any tokens, we're gonna drop that detail out of it, or at least we're gonna massively simplify this, because it's. It, it's just like this little detail. But I like the detail. That's something that really. Uh, so. After we draw everything, this is where we add the streaks. And then we're gonna go four i equals one, two, and then we can decide how many streaks there are. Uh, I'm gonna actually do a local, first of all, I will definitely mark this uh, with a star, with, with a triple star. <laughs> and we can actually uh, set maybe, we, because we don't know how many there are, so we're gonna set uh, it to seven, and we're gonna find out if seven is a good number of those little streaks. I, I think seven was a good number, but we're gonna see. So now we need to, <laughs> we, we made our life so difficult, it's crazy. <laughs> Akira Tetsuo! It's like the anime, repeating. 
Uh, I'm, I'm go going crazy here. Actually, no, it was Kaneda and Ed and, and Tetsuo. Anyway, so we want to de define the points at which the streaks begin. That's what we want to do. We want to find the points along the edge. We want to find these points here along the edge of the oval where the streaks touch the outer rim of the, the, the dome, right? These points are the points that we want to find. Because when we have the points, we can just draw a straight line upwards. That will give us already an, an okay streak, right? And then once we have the straight streaks, we can find ways of curving them inwards maybe a little bit. But first of all, let me find those streaks that go just upwards. And in order to do that, we need to basically uh, do like an angle measurement, right? We want to create, calculate the angle of the streaks because they want, we do want to have them maybe spaced regularly apart so they're a bit closer together at the edges. So we want to, <laughs> I know this is getting crazy, I know. <laughs> stay with me, stay, don't go away. <laughs> Episode 88. <laughs> So we want to figure out the angles at which the streaks should appear. And don't, don't have the perfect angles. We have assume this is a circle and then we can we can make the squishing happen uh, in the sine and cosine calculations. But yeah, we want to go through the angles here. All right, so what we ha will have eventually, we're gonna, we're gonna have some, something like local AX equals, I'm just gonna call it AX, whatever, um, sine, and then there's gonna be some angle involved. And then we're gonna multiply it by bomb RD, right? Uh, and then we're also gonna have a, a Y. And it's also gonna be a cosine and it's gonna be multiplied by bomb RD multiplied by perk, pers. Um, so now all we need to really find out is the angle. The angle is something like local ang equals so we space the circle evenly, so it's going to be like um, 1 divided by num multiplied by i, something like this, right? Um, we actually want to go halfway around the circle, so it's going to be 0 0.5, like this. Um, technically, technically this, right? Like something like this. And then let's draw those streaks, so we're going to go line, um, bomb x, minus AX, um, bump X, bump Y, minus AY, and then bump X minus AX, bump Y minus AY, minus 10, and then it's gonna be a bright gray, the six color. Mm -hmm. I just wanna see them. I just wanna see what I got wrong. Oh, we got them. So there, we have the streaks, they're just go, starting in the middle of the bomb uh, and then going wrong way around. So um, we want to make a minus 0 0.25 here. And that should be, okay. <laughs> Plus 0 0.25. There we go, I, I don't buy. Wait, I actually understand the problem now. It should be plus. Why did I do minus? It should be plus. Minus if you want to go up. So that's why they went in the wrong direction here. Uh, I want to have plus a y, but minus 10. That would be correct, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's why we have to go minus here. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> Something I don't quite like is that we have, like, on the left, we have the streak going, like, being at the very edge. On the right, it's not at the edge at all. Um, maybe you can tweak this number a little bit. No, that's the wrong way. It's not fully centered. What if we do 30? Mm. 28. Mm, that's too little. Yeah, that seems good. Right? We're gonna see in a second if this. And this actually already looks pretty good, I would say. This already looks pretty good. Now the lines are straight, so that's what something I don't like. And uh, also, they kind of like these are just like these lines, right? It's just like just a line. And it would be nice if, um, like, because in the in the Akira explosion, the lines were kind of like wispy and and very like you know like dissolving a little bit in inside the dome. So I want to maybe do like a little bit of a fall off here, right? And in order to do that, we need to maybe add a bit of a fill pattern here, right? So we have a little bit of a of a. Our thing happening, but it's not that difficult. Let me let me show you. 
So, I mean, there's different ways of doing this. this how, much, how much tokens is this? 17 tokens? 17 tokens. Okay, so let's do something like four um, J in all and then uh, this is that do I have to do do and and then here we're gonna do 10 10 20 I think is, is, is a good solution here and then we're gonna see how in a second how that works and then um, we're gonna draw those lines and then here instead of the 10 we're gonna just put J in here right so first it draws a, the J line and then it draws the the long line and maybe I think we should draw the long line first and then the short line next no other way around like this and then because we're just gonna draw instead of one line we're gonna draw two lines and then on a second line we're just gonna do a clip in here uh, not clip what I'm saying fill fill pattern like this something like this this seems fine and then after this we're gonna do, reset the fill pattern so on the second loop here, this will loop twice. And did, did I save tokens? It's, I, think, I think it did. So it will loop twice through this. It will draw two lines, a short line and then a long line. And after it draws the first line, it will set a fill pattern. So the next line will be filled with patterns. And then we reset it, and then we're gonna draw the next line uh, in a row. So this looks like this. Ah, nice, isn't it? And that's really, really cool, I think. Now there is a bit of a problem here. Um, that I want to exemplify in a second. So when I make the bump really big, the lines are still the same size. And if I make the bump really small, because the, the bump will grow, right? Now the lines are way bigger than the radius of the bump. So I want the length of the line to be related to the radius. <laughs> you see where this is going? You see the wetness! <laughs> um, I don't know what a good value is so i'm just gonna go 0 0.6 wait so first we draw the short long line yeah yeah no first we draw the short line yeah that's this is good so instead of setting like a, this fixed length this j what i want to do here is j times um bomb rd right so now they're small let me let me make this uh 32 again okay this is not good now the the overall length is okay maybe but I think the the ratio between the filled and the dotted line is is wrong so let us set it to 0 0.3 now this is good now on the edges it's still a little bit too long but this is the, um, the problem is that it's not curving on the edges right it should be curving inside and it's not curving inside let us make the bump really big. You can see the lines are bigger and a bigger explosion. Now, really not now a little bit too, th too thin, maybe maybe we need more lines in this. But if we make it really small, it still works out. This looks like a, like a nice explosion. Yeah. Good. So now I want to add the curvature. I do want to have the curvature after all. And the way I'm thinking of doing the curvature which might be not the wisest choice. Maybe there's actually a lot, lot easier choice, but here I'm, I'm thinking that I would do the curvature the following. I'm gonna use, oh my gosh, this looks, <laughs> this looks horrible. I'm gonna use a similar, can we undo this a little bit? Yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna use a similar method that is, would be the correct method of doing this. And that is I'm gonna draw an oval. It's just not gonna be like the weird mathematically perfect oval. It's gonna be wrong oval, but I'm just gonna, you know, take a little snippet out of that oval that, that has just a little bit of curvature. And then uh, I'm gonna hope that that a bad oval will, will suffice. So the ovals will look like this. We're gonna, the center is gonna be always on the X position is going to always in the middle and they will go out like this, so to speak, right? They will just be ovals that will go out like this. And they roughly follow the curvature of that, of that thing. And then I will just take, and then I will just take a snippet out of those ovals, kind of like this, right? And those snippets out of those ovals and they will make up my line. So not, then I will have those curving lines and they will maybe not perfectly converge into that top of the, of the uh, of the actual explosion but they will look fine enough they would at least at least have some curvature this is my stretch so let us remove the line and let us start drawing some ovals so oval 
2. So the center is going to be bomb x. The y position is going to be bomb y plus a y. The width of the oval is going to be ax. Uh, and the height of the oval is going to be bomb um, rd, the radius of the bomb multiplied by pairs. I'm going to see how that works and then we're going to go with 6. I just want to see those ovals, how, what that looks like. Ooh, okay, okay, good. Um, I don't like how the ovals dip down, right? Like how they how they go very much. Like the curvature on the sides here is okay, but I don't quite like how they go, how low they, those ovals go. So what? Let, let me add something here. What if we divide it by two? See now they're not not going as low anymore. I think that's better. And then we're gonna what what if we add here a y? So make them a little bit taller. Those ovals in the center. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoo, that looks weird. But you see now, if you look at the edge of the lower part of the dome, on the sides you have the curvature curving inward, but on the, in the center of the dome you have just straight lines. That's kind of what I want. That's kind of what I what I what I'm interested in. Let me let me just like do something like this. And now the, the only challenge that is left for us to do is to make a clipping rectangle that clips out just the right part of from that oval. Oof, that's gonna be <laughs> that's not gonna be easy. So we're gonna go clip. So the left edge of that clipping rectangle is actually not quite clear. It should be AX usually, but the problem is like the rectangle is always the left edge, right? So if if we have on the the stuff on the left side. That's going to be always AX, but if we stuff, have stuff on the right side of the, of the or, or on your side, on the right side of the dome, then um, AX is actually indicating the right side of that thing. So we have to kind of swap things around. But you know what? I'm going to have clipping rectangles that work well for, um, for the first three. So I'm going to um, uh, restrict our drawing for the fir to the first three. And then we're gonna see how that that works out. Like, does, does that work? Yeah. So only the first three we are drawing. So we're gonna make it work for the left edge, and then we're gonna figure out the right edge. So AX. Now the top is gonna to be bomb. This is tough. This is gonna to be bomb Y plus uh, AY. So that is gonna be the, the point at which the, the line starts, we start drawing. And now we need to add the height of the line, right? So it's gonna be minus, and that was basically the height of the line, right? So that was this part here, um, this. Basically this is what we need to add here. And I think we can leave out the, the this part because this is gonna be go, go first anyway. So that's going to be the um, the the top of that rectangle of that clipping rectangle. Now the width of the clipping rectangle. Oh, by the way, AX is it should be AX is completely wrong. Well, actually, the clipping rectangle is doesn't matter where it is in X, so it could be just zero if you for, for all we care. Um, no, it can't be zero. It can't be zero. It needs to be why why AX? It should be. It should be actually bomb x plus ax. Now the width of, of the clipping rectangle, I'm gonna put it in the next line. I'm gonna put each, each each parameter in each line because this can, so this is gonna be the width, that's gonna be just the ax, that's the width. And now the height, that is gonna be this part here. Like so. All right, so we flip and then we're gonna clip back. Let's see how that works. It doesn't work at all. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay, so a good way to debug this is just gonna, gonna go fill zero, zero, 120, uh, no, fill rect zero, zero, 128, 128 red. Just fill the screen, fill, fill rect, rect fill. Okay, uh, first of all, first of all, now we need to bring in, now we need to br bring in X scroll. Always X scroll. Okay, now it's moving with the bomb. 
Oh, okay, so we have them. Oh, this is actually the right edge. This is actually the right edge. From 0 to 3 is the right edge. So let's go to from 3 to 7. What? This is not working at all the way I, I thought it would go. Oh, I think the ovals that we're drawing are, are wrong. Let's see. Let, let's see them. I mean, they're there. Let's remove the lines. Okay, what is what is number four? What does line number four look like? That's good. What does line number five look like? Yeah, I mean that's that's correct. Okay, so once again. So I think the ovals are not the problem. I think the clipping rectangle is the problem. Oh, right, so the, the width is going to be absolute of AX because it's actually negative for us. Yes, that was the problem. So we see now there's a bit of a curvature happening, especially on the very left edge, and that's fantastic. There is a bit of a problem in that is we should see more lines. We see fewer lines than we should see. You see the center lines not showing up. I think for the center line, the AX is just like very small. Um, so let us add plus plus one. And yeah, that makes the center line appear. That's fantastic. Um, it seems like, look, the lines are not quite reaching the bottom. There might be some kind of like rounding error or something. Let's just add plus two on the on the height. Now they're they're touching the bottom. That's good. Oh wait, so so we're actually what it does that work for everybody? It actually mm, except look look the very left edge you don't see the curvature. You don't see the where the curvature is happening. And that is because the beginning, the left edge of the of the clipping rectangle still like covers the vertical part of the line, but the curvature is no longer being covered by this. So we need to start the left edge uh, at a different place when we're going into the positive regions. So into the positive AX regions. So we're gonna go if AX is, gr is smaller than zero, or like no, AX smaller than zero, we're gonna do a ternary. So if AX is smaller than zero, then we're gonna continue as, as we were. Or I think it's just gonna be bomb X plus X scroll. <clears throat> Like this. Let's try this. Yes! Yes! Tetsuo! Ah! Look at this, how beautiful this looks. Ah! Isn't that just fantastic? And again, those curvatures are not perfect. They're not mathematically perfect, but we truncate them very quickly. And we just want to have this little feeling of curvature. Uh, I want to see how those look when we have a bigger radius, if those hold up. See, when they're bigger, you, you really benefit from the, that subtle curvature happening. We, this could be also just two lines. This could be also just two lines. Um, but I think this was a better solution for that. Overall. And then let's see how tall small looks. It even works when it's perfect. All right, so this was a bit of a long episode, um, uh, but we have the basics of the bump ready. We spent a lot of time worth perfecting our little stupid... Uh, I'm gonna actually hard code this now, so we, we it's all, we're always gonna be seven. Yeah, I don't care about what other, other people think. And actually this ang, this part here, that's... No, that's, that's changing over time. Okay, good. Right, so I want to now, um, yeah, this is marked with, with four stars. Um, this is, can be done a lot cheaper. And in fact, if you have suggestions of how to make this a lot cheaper, because it's not that a bit of a complicated effect, then do let me know in the comment section. I really always appreciate. But for now, let us wrap up this episode. And we're gonna do so by saying the things that I say at the end of each episode. Thank you so much to everybody supporting this show, who support this show on coffee.com. Uh, the address, if you want to do that, is coffee.com slash lazydevs. And today I want to do, do a big shout out to the newcomers, to the new people who subscribe to coffee or who make one of donations. So for today's episode, that's gonna be uh, G-Hive, Ellen Deer, Buster Ermi, Brett Chalupa, Aaron Nagara, and also one of the nations by Amok, Gorkan Gerhard, O Christian, Captain Jennifer, and Jonathan. 
Thank you so much for your support and welcome to the Supporters Club. And as always, I'm also reading out uh, some comments. This is from Progress Trick 2966 on episode 20, 25 of the basic shmup tutorial, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if you address this later, but you can save quite a lot of tokens in the call function. Here's my solutions. It's six, it saves about 46 tokens. And it has like a collision function where all of the collision uh, calculation is happening in a single line, in a single return statement. Fantastic job, I love this a lot. It, this saves indeed a lot of tokens. The reason why I prefer to spell it out in four individual if statements is that generally this part is really hard for people to grasp. This is something that people like quite a lot of people just quit game development when they get to the collision detection because it's just like a lot of different math statements. And I think if they're all in one line, that's like really confusing, especially for newcomers. So especially for newcomers, I like to put in those like separate if statements. I think that's that's a little bit wiser. Um, but yes, in the long run, obviously saving a lot of tokens is, especially when it's 46 tokens, is, is worth a lot. And actually, I might actually use this as well here because right now my collision function is still spread into different if statements and maybe I could just use a formula like this. Yes, yes, yes. So we are in the middle of bombs. We have created beautiful, beautiful bomb, but it's not moving, right? So that's gonna be the next step. We want to animate this. See you on next episode, guys. Bye-bye.